Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. It's early spring, and we're starting to see these large blackish brown birds soaring over our head very slowly. And it's very common to hear someone say, look, the buzzards are back. Well, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the two types of vultures that we have in this country and why they aren't buzzards. We misuse that name here uh, and we're going to learn what is a real buzzard and what the, the vultures are and what they're all about. So let's get the, the, the bird of honor up on the screen here. This is the turkey vulture the most common and the most widespread of the vultures we have in uh, the in North America. And they are um, primarily a, a, a widespread bird that are affectionately known as the cleaning crew. They are very, very famous for their ability to and their habit of uh, cleaning up dead things, carrion as we call it. Um, and when we talk about birds a lot and we talk about their different senses, if you've watched me regularly, you know I talk about how most birds, uh, they don't have a good sense of smell. But it's not an important sense to most birds. You know, scent dissipates in, into the air and it's very hard to locate um, uh, things by smell if you're a bird because you're up high in the air flying around. Well, these birds, the, the turkey vultures, have incredible senses of smell. And the way I understand it is the part of the brain with them that uh, differentiate and identify smells and, and is responsible for smells uh, in the brain is very large in turkey vultures. And they, they can, the way I understand it is they can sense the smell in, in parts per trillion. I mean, just a minute part. And they, that helps them zero in on uh, dead things. And they can even find uh, dead things on the forest floor under a tree canopy from above it. Uh, you know, they're amazing they're, when it comes to that. And of course, being a bird that eats dead things, uh, and we all know how uh, uh, that badly that smells, uh, then that we, you know, if we eat them as human, eat things like that have gone bad and soured as a human, we're definitely going to get sick. Well, their stomach acids are incredibly powerful. They can eat just about anything. They can eat, they can eat animals with rabies and it doesn't affect them. They can eat, you know, I, I, with a number, all kinds of uh, the diseases that, that may infect in, in a dead thing, but they can eat it and their stomach acids take care of that is how strong they are. Now, when we see them uh, like this, Yes, they are drying their wings. We'll see this is a scene we see very familiar in the morning, them up in a tree in the sunlight, uh, and the sun is drying. Because they're on the ground a lot when they're eating um, dead things, and so sometimes they pick up parasites in their, in their feathers and things, and the sun helps with that as well. Uh, and then we'll see them in huge numbers. This is called a committee of vultures, uh, they, and they do tend to roost in large groups like this, uh, and we see them in all different sizes, and they catch our attention because you know, we associate vultures uh, with death and people uh, see them near their house and they see large groups of them. And they, they're like, should I be worried? <laughs> no, uh, no, they, they, they are, they're not smelling you as a live creature. They're selling, they're like sensing and smelling for dead things. Uh, and if there's something dead nearby, they will find it. Now, now Turkey vultures have a couple of really cool adaptations. Kids love it when you tell them this in, in, in the nature center world. Uh, one of the things that they will do if they are cornered and they feel threatened is they will projectile vomit uh, uh, to, as a defense mechanism. And you know how bad it must smell when it goes into their stomach. You can only imagine how bad uh, what comes flying out of it would smell as well. So very effective defense mechanism if you're a turkey vulture. And the other thing is that uh, in really hot weather, uh, they will defecate on their feet for to cool off. It will help to lower their body temperature. So a couple of maybe gross but very cool uh, adaptations that turkey vultures have. Now, not all vultures are turkey vultures. Most famously, the turkey vultures have this red bare head. And why is it bare? Because they're sticking their head down in dead things and they're pulling out the, it, the, 
the bad stuff inside <laughs> the blood and the guts would get stuck to their head feathers. Uh, and so they have evolved over time to lose those head feathers so they can do that without bringing out and have the decaying feathers and things uh, on them. And so uh, they, they are skinless on the head, but they, we have two species of vultures in the country, the black vulture on the left here and the turkey vulture on the right. Now they both look similar and they uh, they don't have any uh, feathers on their head um, but they look very different to a bird watcher now how do you tell them apart look at the wings the turkey vulture flies famously with a strong dihedral shape in other words a v a flying v and they teeter when they fly the black vulture doesn't have that as exaggerated of a, a dihedral shape like that. And look how uh, this, the black vulture basically has no tail or very little tail. Uh, from above, they look like they have no tail. And the now, turkey vultures has a fairly long tail. And look at the white windows, as we call them out here in the primary feathers on the wings. So there's white windows, whereas the turkey vulture doesn't have that. Now, Famously, the black vultures actually don't have that good a sense of smell, not like the turkey vulture does. So black vultures follow turkey vultures because they know they're going to find food. And typically, black vultures soar higher in the air than turkey vultures. That's because they're looking visually for turkey vultures on the ground on a, a, a carcass. Now, one-on-one, -on -one, a turkey vulture is larger. And I say, I've seen this a lot having grown up in North Carolina. Uh, whenever you would find, we would find a, a vultures on a kill, the turkey vultures are the not ones who find it and the first one theirs and the first one eating on it. Uh, and if one black vulture comes in, the turkey vultures can run him off. You know, one on one, the turkey vultures are larger, but there's hardly ever just one black vulture. So what happens ends up happening is several black vultures come down and, and harass a turkey vulture or two to make them leave. And so black vulture, that's how black vultures find their food. So uh, they uh, they rely on the turkey vulture. So and black vultures are very very widespread. They way down into uh, South America, whereas turkey vultures are, are more northern, and we have them up throughout North America up here. Uh, and another part that will confuse people, we get this a lot, is people, uh, because we don't have black vultures here in Kansas City, up, up north of the Missouri River. Now, eventually they may reach up here, but they haven't. And a lot of people will call and say, oh, I had a black vulture. Well, what they saw typically is a juvenile turkey vultures. When when turkey vultures are, are first born, they're first hatched, and they're uh, out with the adults, they have black heads. Uh, and, and so people will think, oh, oh, that's a black, must be a black vulture. No, not all birds with black heads are black vultures. They uh, Young turkey vultures do have that. And you can see this kind of white rim around the face against the feathers. That's, that's pretty diagnostic. But the tail. The tail is much longer than a black vulture. And let's see, I've got a picture here uh, close, well, fairly close up. Uh, you can see that kind of that rim around the, the immature turkey vulture uh, on the right and, and, and instead of the black vulture there on the left. Black vultures are infamous for a couple of things that the tur turkey vultures are not. We were in, we were bird watching in South Florida, way down in the Keys uh, a few years ago. And we came up, and there were lots of black vultures. A lot In that part of the world, there are lots of black vultures. Uh, and we came up uh, in a parking lot, and there was a sign that was a warning for people, who, the boaters who had uh, were parked into this, in this boat ramp to not leave their vehicles, uh, uncut, their windshields uncovered. Um, and it's a, a tow a tub of tarps here, a, a, like a trash bin, and that has tarps in it, you can take and put over the windshield of your, your pickup truck or your car if you're going to leave them there very long, because evidently the, the black vultures have a tendency to tear out the rubber seal around your windshields. Uh, and uh, not exactly sure why, but they, they do it. They pick on it. And, they, and there have been fishermen who've come back from a day of fishing in the parking lots and the windshield will be laying in the front of their truck. They had, they had ripped out the seal and the, the windshield falls in or they start to drive away and the windshield falls in. They don't notice it. So they recommend clo covering up your 
uh, windshields if you're going to be out in those areas with lots of black vultures, which is really interesting. I've never seen that before. So turkey vultures are just arriving. Uh, they, they, they winter in the south. You guys down south, if you're watching this, I know you have tons of them in the winter. Down in Florida and Georgia and all across Texas and those areas, the Carolinas even have them. But they really do start arriving in the north now. They're migrating back north and we're seeing that the reports are coming in. So yes, they are vultures not buzzards. Buzzards are, is an old world term, meaning Europe, Asia, uh, and many of their, a, an eagle is a buzzard. A hawk is a buzzard. Uh, and it has, that's the, the vernacular that's been used for a millennia over there. Um, and some, there's a rough-legged buzzard in, in Europe that is the same thing as a rough-legged hawk in this country. But in this country, we started using the word uh, for vulture. We use buzzard incorrectly. You know, it, it's up to you. But that's why it gets confusing. That's why there's scientific names uh, it, it, so that there's one true name for uh, for birds and animals all over the planet. And then common uh, uh, phrases like that, common names like that can be very, very confusing from one place to another. So if you're a bird watcher from Europe, you come here and somebody said there's a buzzard they're looking for a hawk or an eagle where it's a, a, instead of a vulture. But our birds are vultures. They're not very closely related to the old world vultures we see in documentaries out in, you know, in Africa around kills and things like that. They look similar, but they're not really that closely related to them. So, but they have very much the same habits, very much the, the, the same bald head and things like that. So turkey vultures, not turkey buzzards, if you will. So, and yes, the California condor is a member of this same new world vultures, as we're calling. Why haven't I talked more about them? Well, simply they're still in a, a huge state of recovery. They're not very widespread uh, and they're, they, they deserve their own program. And in the future, we will do one on those. But as for now, we're concentrating on the turkey vulture and the black vulture. Uh, I did a few, this program a, a while back. Uh, it, it was terrible quality of sound was awful, so I decided to redo it. So uh, thank you for your patience. If you'd already seen it before and you know, watching through this, but it, it was requested that I redo it, and so I did. So thank you. Hopefully you learned something. We uh, appreciate you joining in, and please send in ideas for future programs. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, and, and ring that bell so you'll know when I'm on next. Until next time, let's talk birds.